let the people come to the stadium and let them enjoy themselves. As long as you look to the certain way of playing, everybody can play. Getting the ball, treat the ball well, let it be your friend. When they saw us playing, everybody was happy. They just went home laughing. If you can laugh and enjoy yourself, it's one of the most important things there is. Johan Cruyff, he was football's enigma. Not only would he ghost past defenders like they weren't there, he would outwit them too. Like a mathematician on the field, he always managed to find another angle. There would always be another dimension to his play. He had the perfect combination of intelligence and skill. He was very intelligent and had an overview of the whole game. And there aren't many that have that ability. There were some, but he was on another level. He was a quick player with extraordinary ability and he had sensational vision. He made football into an art form and Johan represented modernity, that winning spirit. He was, yeah, he was special. It was in Vatergraafsmeer, in the east of Amsterdam, that Johan Cruyff grew up in the 1950s. His home was close to the old Ajax Stadium, which was appropriate for such a talented kid. But there were some tough moments in childhood for the youngster. My father died when I was 12, which means that my second father was uh, taking care about the field of Ajax. My mother was working there, which means that, uh, well, in between school times, from 12 to 2 or whatever, when you eat, you, you went there. Which means it's, yeah, almost second home. He learned on the street, like me. You know, most of the players from Ajax, he come from the street. He lived 500 meters from, from the stadium. He was like a son of uh, us. He was a real, real Amsterdam boy, you know? He was a real man of Amsterdam. Then I was on the field and he was behind. He shoot the ball back to the trainers and he was always running and playing with the little guys. He was a small friend of all the players, you know. They were older, they were, yeah, they, they just guide me in the good things and in the bad things. When I had a good game and I talked a little too much, it was like, it's, shut up or we'll find you. The youngster, though, was something of a prodigy. Cruyff made his debut at the age of 17, scoring in his first match and making a name for himself on equal terms with the men he'd once seen as father figures. They were players for the first team. And of course, they were the idols of uh, all young players at that, uh, at that stage. But at the same time, I, I saw them every day. So when I went into the first team, everybody says, were you nervous? I said, well, I, I wasn't nervous. I, I went in the dressing room all the time as a young kid. It was just so natural, so, so, so automatic. By 1966, Ajax were dominating the Dutch league. They won the Ere Division with a little help from their young centre forward, who got 25 goals in 23 games. Well, first of all, we had a good team at that time. Uh, there were some very good players and I was quite, at that time, still quite selfish. I knew where I had to go. Uh, my control was very quick because that's what I had to do my whole life, otherwise I would never have come to the first team. So it was quite easy to score these goals. It was just based on my quality. He was fantastic. He was so smart. He knows where the ball is coming. He saw everything. And he can play on every place in the team. The 1960s were pioneering days for Ajax. Renus Mikkels and his talented squad were developing a fluid style of play, a system that would become the celebrated total football. Shaggy, this young 
With a scholarly air, through method and precision, Michels became the master, commanding respect from his attentive pupils. And in Cruyff, Michels had the perfect player to put his ideas into action on the pitch. He was Ajax's star. But there were times when even Johan Cruyff was brought back down to earth. The trainer say, no smoking, Michels. And we, we come from the training in the car and we drive 200 meters and he stop with the car. And he make uh, cigarettes and he smoke the cigarette after the training. <laughs> We had to do some training in the, in the woods, running, and I hated running. The second goalkeeper and myself, we were uh, behind the tree, smoking a cigarette until they were coming by. And then one day we were just smoking, and then the coach was behind the, the tree. So he said to me, uh, next day was the day off. Next day you've got to train because we can't accept that and all these sort of things. I was there on the place at 7 o'clock. Then the coach came in his car, in his pyjama. He said, it's too early, it's too cold, bye-bye. So he turned around, went home again. And I was there looking like a fool. Whatever went on behind the scenes in Amsterdam, Michels and Cruyff were going places. And in 1969, Ajax made it to the final of the European Cup, where they met AC Milan. We had to pass the first uh, final of the European uh, Cup. At that time, was uh, in Madrid against Milan and uh, we lost there. Not because we were worse, but the experience was not there. But you have to go through these mistakes. You had to learn from it. And then the great period started in 71. It was a bright London evening at Wembley Stadium, June the 2nd, 1971. It turned out to be the first defining moment for Johan Cruyff and his Ajax side. It was the beginning of the Ajax era, where the likes of Real Madrid and Benfica once ruled, European competition would now be dominated by a small club from the east of Amsterdam. The Ajax at that time was still in their organisation, an amateur club. I think maybe 10 or 20 persons were working there. You didn't have directors, you didn't have, no, 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 there was a president. And then, yeah, people who did it in their, in their spare time. A year on, in 1972, Ajax were preparing for another final, this time with a new coach, Stefan Kovacs, in charge. It was Ajax against Internazionale at the De Kuyp Stadium in Rotterdam. And in the second half, Cruyff took the game to the Italians. You knew that wherever you went, uh, you had somebody marking you, wherever you, wherever you go. And it just was waiting for the moment to be alert, to do what you have to do. If you do something, he will react. And that's what I had uh, when I scored a goal with my head. Two goals from Cruyff brought Ajax their second European Cup. They were now in a period of phenomenal success, and there was never any doubting who was the jewel in the crown. Johan was a leader. Johan was a natural-born leader. He was the driving force of Ajax and our team. He always had that in him, and this was very important to Ajax. Was ook heel belangrijk voor Ajax. It was Johnny Rep who scored the goal in 1973 that beat Juventus in Belgrade. Three in a row for Ajax and Johan Cruyff. It was a fantastic achievement because I think, I don't know, not a lot of clubs did it. So you, you came into a select group of clubs within Europe. I play seven, eight years with him. And we win three times the European Cup together. And that's the, he was the best. But this was to be the last time that Cruyff would hold the European Cup as a player. Despite the celebrations, there were problems behind the scenes, which meant that Ajax's star had to move on. 
from the club on, it was no discipline. For nobody, not from the president to the players, not from the players to the coach, not from the coach to this. It was pretty because they, I think they could have held a few more years. You can get angry, that's what I did. And I uh, tried to keep these things together, but it was almost uh, impossible after these, uh, after these three cups. So in 1973, the European Player of the Year, the best player in the world at the time, chose to sign for Barcelona. For the locals, the arrival of Cruyff and the impact he had was as good as a miracle. When Johan arrived here in Barcelona, the club was going through, let's say, a strange period. Even though we were playing well and had good players, we weren't winning anything. But when Cruyff arrived, in the footballing sense, it was like the Big Bang, which really reactivated the team. The transformation was not to go back and have a look what happens, no, go out there and just try to win and win. Barcelona at that time had some good players, but they, they, they didn't think like that. And, and the moment they start thinking like that, it was a very good team. Back then, Barcelona hadn't won the league for 14 years. The club and the city needed a saviour. I remember it all from the very first day he arrived. Barcelona was second from bottom and the first match was against Granada at home. We won 4-0 and Johan scored two goals and we didn't lose a single game until we were champions. That league of 73-74 was the best memory of my childhood. It was sensational. It was a season full of sensational moments, like the goal that Cruyff scored against Atletico Madrid, the phantom goal as it became known to Catalans, but remember that season for many reasons. I remember the goal he scored against Atletico Madrid and the 5-0 victory in the Bernabeu when we played with Mora and Deportero. Real Madrid against Barcelona at the Bernabeu was perhaps the most famous match Cruyff ever played for Barcelona. It was fantastic for me as a player to play Madrid. It was such a, a, a huge thing, first to play in Bernabeu, and then if you saw the game, we played very well. Barcelona didn't just play well, they won 5-0. <laughs> I think that for those of us who were lucky enough to play in that team, we'll remember that match forever. Things were beginning to change in Spain. People were starting to be able to say what they thought politically. And in that sense, a result like that against a team like Madrid, in their own ground, sent shockwaves around Europe. Almost every Catalan saw this as a symbolic victory over Madrid. At the time, Spain was still under the dictatorship of Franco, a particularly tough time for Catalonia. Afterwards, when you live here, then you see the differences between uh, Catalonia and Franco at that time, and uh, what it meant for them to have the best player of Europe at that time, because they gave me the, the golden boy uh, ball a few times. And uh, so for them it was something that, uh, OK, uh, we out, uh, outplayed, let's say, Madrid. 1974 was also a World Cup year, and Holland arrived in West Germany with Cruyff, the best player in the world at the